me to begin by starting with a story. Back in 1983, a young 16-year-old girl, really the age of many of us in this very room, decided to take upon herself the journey to try and find for herself a better life. Now, that involved leaving her homeland, Vietnam, her family, and everything she ever knew behind, hoping that for something better for herself. Now, of course, this meant the journey would be perilous, as she and hundreds of other people crowded themselves onto a tiny fishing boat and sailed across the ocean almost blindly for four days and three nights with little to no food or water. The situation was something like this, and as you can imagine, it was pretty desperate. However, she was not the only one to take part in this journey. There are, are around two million people estimated that tried to escape Vietnam in its oppressive communist regime. However, only half of those people survived, around a million of them. And this young girl grew up to become a clinical, clinical psychologist and very active in terms of political issues in Vietnam. And most importantly, she's my mother. Now, many people, when they hear about Vietnam, back to the conflicting ideology between democracy and communism, they find that to be the most prevalent issue in Vietnamese society. However, I feel personally that there is a greater issue threatening the country and the survival of the Vietnamese people. And of course, that is global warming and particularly sea level rise. But let's start with the basics. Global warming is the issue in which we as people are creating so much pollution through our gas and oil powered vehicles and that the carbon dioxide emissions generated float up into the atmosphere, making it thicker and thicker. This thick blanket of our atmosphere traps sunlight even better than ever before, and thus the heat continuously bounces from the surface of the Earth, thus heating the temperatures and climates all around the entire planet. Now, while the changes in temperature are very minor, only a few degrees, in, few degrees Fahrenheit, in places such as the Arctic, Greenland, or Antarctica, the effects can be very, very devastating on these fragile ecosystems. Particularly with global warming, when it forces ice to melt, despite these small rises in temperature, that ice will, of course, when it does melt, it creates water that floats into the ocean. Now, over time, this water that, that is generated and flows into the ocean will rise even more, and thus, of course, you have sea level rise. Now, for us in the United States, uh, unless you live in the Gulf Coast or Florida, the issue is not that important. However, in countries such as Vietnam, it can be very, very disastrous. This chart shows in areas that will be inundated or flooded or submerged entirely by around one to two meters of ocean water over the next 50 to 100 years. The red areas indicate that will be inundated, and especially what you'll note is that in the southern tip of Vietnam, that it is, seems to be a very, very large problem. Now, unfortunately, this southern tip is also the Mekong Delta, which contains large quantities of fertile soil and farmland, where Vietnam grows most of its food supply. Now, if it is to be submerged in seawater, then, of course, that means all this food and all these supplies that Vietnam desperately needs as a third world country will be essentially destroyed. Now, one thing that this chart in particular does not mention, which you may find in government reports or even United Nations reports, is that a handful of the Vietnamese people will be, quote, unquote, affected. But what does that really mean? Well, affected is, is a euphemism. And basically what it means is you have a very high likelihood that because of global warming and sea level rise, you might die. Now, of course, the ways that that could happen range from homelessness to starvation to political instability and even at the highest level, war. Now, you may be asking yourself, how can global warming and sea level rise generate war in another country? Well, believe it or not, there's already a scenario that this is happening. New York Times reporter Thomas Friedman, who is very prominent in the, on the topic of the Syrian civil war, reported earlier this year that he notes that what's something that isn't really being reported in the media is that in Syria, prior to the civil war, there was a massive drought. And more importantly, the Assad regime, which was oppressing the Syrian people, were not taking action in order to, pro order to try and help their people survive. He also notes that a majority of the rebels that are currently fighting the Assad regime used to be farmers. Therefore, we can see that as people take it upon themselves to try and save what they have as they try and fight global warming, that things can get pretty violent. And that in the case of Syria, it's only one example. And possibly in the future, there may be many more. Now, Vietnam in and it of, it of itself is a very small country on the grand scheme of things. This chart shows the levels of pollution that are generated by many countries or regions around the world and predicts even into the future how much pollution they will generate. Now, since Vietnam is small, 
If they themselves were to stop all industrial production, everything that they ever did in order to produce pollution, if they stopped everything, it would have no effect on what would happen in terms of global warming and sea level rise. What you may notice in this chart is that at the bottom, the big blue band represents the United States. And closer to the top, you have a large, kind of lighter purple band that represents China. Notice how those two bands are the largest, meaning that the United States and China generate the most pollution out of any country or, collect or collection of countries around the entire world. Therefore, this means that as first world polluters, that we really need to take it upon ourselves, take the responsibility in order to try and protect our planet and save third world countries such as Vietnam. So what exactly can you do as an individual? Well, of course, all these solutions are, I'm sure you've heard of before, and they are pretty simple and it can really result in saving for you as well as the environment. But really, the big task that we all have to do collectively as a first world nation is that we have to, well, vote. I mean, currently I'm only over 15 and a half and many of us are high school students, but I have every intention when I turn 18 to vote in order to try and help create policy that can protect our planet. As the next generation, we all must take action and use our rights in order to select the correct policymakers, hoping that they will make the right decisions and the right policies in order to combat global warming, protect our environment, and, by extension, save countries like Vietnam and make the world a better place. Thank you.